Hi guys, welcome back. I'm making the gnomes a picnic table today using recycled cardstock from food or in this case, coffee packaging. Cut along the fold lines into panels and glue together four layers with PVA and dry under a heavy book. What you're left with is thick cardstock for next to no cost. I'm not going to give you dimensions or measurements for my picnic table because I'm not actually sure what scale it's in. I just made it to fit my gnome family. Okay, so once your glued layers of cardstock are dry, trim off any uneven edges. Measure and mark out the pieces for the tabletop, two bench seats, two side supports, one central support for under the tabletop, and we'll work on the legs later. Don't cut them out just yet because I'm going to try out a wood grain technique I learned from Laura at Tiny View. I'll put a link in the description below to her channel. To create a fake wood grain texture in the card's dock, I'm using a small ball stylus to press firmly on the card and drawing lines into it. Let the lines curve and wobble a bit. Wood grain is seldom totally straight. Just have the lines all running in the same direction. It's easier to do all the pieces together like this than it is when they're all cut out separately. And remember the materials used in this project will be listed below in the description. I'm using a bigger ball stylus to mark out the planks that would form the tabletop. See the texture? This will show up really nicely when I paint it. You can cut out the pieces now. This is a side view sketch of my table and how I wanted to construct it. 
I also used it to create a template for the legs. It came in handy to work out the placement of all the pieces. About now I decided to sand all the edges of the cardstock. I rounded out the corners a tiny bit. If your cardstock is well glued together you won't have to worry about the layers splitting apart during the sanding. Very cleverly I managed to miss footage of cutting the table legs and trimming a 90 degree corner off each end of the two side supports. Here I'm marking the underside of the tabletop where I wanted to glue the support piece in the centre of it. I'm using tacky glue at the moment but I do resort to super glue for later bits because I just didn't want to wait. Now I'm going to glue the seats to the side supports. Lay both the seat pieces face down and place them a slightly narrower distance apart than the width of the tabletop. You can see the support bars are slightly longer on one side than on the other. Add the tacky glue to each end of the longer sides and attach them between the seats. Fortunately with tacky glue you get a little playtime to make adjustments before it dries. So now I'm working on the legs. I've got the template I made off camera, but even a template isn't foolproof and I end up needing to trim one of the pieces. I don't know how one ended up out of whack, I must have had a brain fade moment. I start off using tacky glue in the joints, but it takes too long to set, so I end up resorting to super glue for that faster hold. Fortunately, I discovered the leg piece that needed trimming before I busted out the super glue. It would have been even better if I did it all in shot, too. Right here is where I realised something wasn't quite right. So I used the other leg to mark out where the Bundy leg needed trimming.
Easy fix and now I'm back in action. Here comes the super glue. I needed these legs to take hold of the side supports really fast. The trickier bit is making sure the side supports are straight or your bench seats will end up looking wonky. Mine did, but I kind of like it better that way, like it's had years of use. Now glue the base to the top once you've finished faffing about with it, that is. So far so good, it needs painting though. These guys look pretty happy about it. First up is burnt umber, give it a full coat all over. Now I'm dry brushing it with raw sienna, I want to show off the wood grain texture. I'm using a big brush and sandarina coloured paint for wear and tear dry brushing. Here's my wonky table so far. I left it in the gnome home for a minute and some of the family came to check it out. It needs some age added to it and some bolts. I used some stick-on rhinestones and painted them silver for the bolts. I left them to dry and used green chalk pastel and a damp brush to add a green algae look to the wood on the sides and legs. All those parts that maybe don't get as much sun as the top and the seats. Then I added some shading with black under the edges and where the bolts are going to sit.
Next I had an idea to brush across the top and the seats to enhance the wood grain more. I'm using tacky glue to stick the rhinestone bolts in place. Watch this, I'm sure many of you will be able to relate to what is about to unfold. And there she blows. Never mind, I finally found it stuck to the edge of my cutting mat. I gave it a coat all over with matte Mod Podge to seal it. It looks like I'm using a lot, but I got a lot of coverage out of that one squirt. Once it's dry, it's all done. If you've enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Ring the notification bell so you don't miss out on any new uploads and leave a comment because I'd love to hear from you. It really helps my channel to grow. If you want to share your own crafty ideas and projects, join my Facebook page called Nessie Monster Crafts. We have Fun Day Fridays where we can all show off our latest works in progress. If you can afford it, please consider buying me a coffee. Links for both my Facebook group and coffee account are in the description below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.